Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to Presenting with Impact. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting to you this morning and welcome to our first webinar for um, pre-16s for years um, 10 and 11 today. So my name's Sophia. You can see me up on the screen there. I'm the Partnership Manager for the Outreach and Access team here at the University of East London. And I have two of my colleagues with me who I'm going to get to introduce and they are helping with today. Hi everyone, my name's Tamina and I'm a project coordinator for the secondary events team. Hi, I'm Sean and I'm the ambassador coordinator in the Outreach and Access team. OK, wonderful. Thank you to Tamina and Sean uh, for helping me out today and co-presenting. Um, so we'll just carry on with the presentation. So a little bit about the University of East London, first of all. It was established in 1898. Um, it's a three campus university, so basically it's just got three sites there. So we've got um, our main Docklands campus, which you can see in the top right hand corner, the white building. Um, and then we've got two campuses in Stratford. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner, that's the oldest part of the university. Um, and we're about those two campuses are uh, about a 10 minute walk from Westfield in East London. So we're quite central. Um, we have students from all over. So we ha have um, students from 135 different countries, but we also have a high number of students around the East London area who come to University of East London as well. So what we do, uh, we work in outreach and access. Um, so we basically support years um, six to 12, even year 13s to help make informed decisions about your future and to support your learning, um, which is partly why we've launched this a series of webinars. So obviously presenting is a really key skill. It's something that you need to use um, not only at school, but in a multitude of different jobs. Um, even if you're at reception, you will need to be uh, presenting yourself to clientele. So um, the tips that you see here today are to, to help make you more confident in your presentations overall as well. So the aims of today's session, uh, I want you to come away with an understanding of what makes a good and a bad presentation. Um, I'd like you to um, understand how to use PowerPoint well and also how to present well just generally um, in yourself. So true or false, a quick true or false question. Um, and again, I'd like to have your answers in the question and answer box. About one in four people have a fear of public speaking. So again, if you could just let us know if you think that's true, if you think that's false um, and why. So maybe you think it should be lower or higher um, if you think it's false. Um, but yeah, it'd be good to have your answers in the question and answer box. So if you want to post a response now um, for that, that question. OK, so we'll just wait for the answers to come through, Sophia. OK, we'll hold fire for you. OK, so we've got someone who said it's true. It's true, OK. Uh, another person thinks it's false. OK, it'd be interesting to know why you think it's false. If you want to elaborate a little bit. Anyone else, true or false? But someone who said depends, not all people are shy. Yeah, OK, so not all people are shy. That's a very good point. So, yeah, it could be that you think it's false because, um, you know, not all people are shy. Some people are more inclined to present him because they're more extroverted. Um, OK, so let's just move on to the answer then. So it's true. Um, one in four people um, have a fear of public speaking. I actually thought that it would be higher in all honesty, but then I'm an introvert and it's not my natural inclination to want to present to people. And I have to say that in school, I was that kid who was always looking down at the piece of paper, um, not engaging with who I'm talking to. Um, and I would get very, very nervous about presenting. It was the last thing I wanted to do. But now I present and I'm running this workshop so I, I present on a you know almost weekly basis to groups of young people so um the key thing i want to say is that even if you're a bit underconfident and you're a bit of an introvert you can be an amazing presenter because actually presenting is a skill okay some people might be louder than others 
and feel more comfortable in that space, but it's definitely something that you can learn. And um, today I'm going to give you the top tips on how to, to, to get to that point. But the key thing is that you do need to practice because that's what you need to do with skills. If you practice them, you get better. That is the key thing. So again, in the Q&A box, I want your thoughts on what makes a bad presentation. So um, there's always uh, times when we've had someone in front of us and we just really can't concentrate on what they're saying. Um, and there's certain things that they do that makes it a bad presentation. So um, any thoughts on things that make a bad presentation? For me, I can think of an example when I was back at university, not um, UBL, a different university that I went to, um, and we had a PhD student who's like a very high level student who was presenting on a very dry topic, um, which is really hard to concentrate on in any case. Um, but he basically just had pages and pages of text. It was like he was reading from a book and he literally just stood there and read them. He was adding absolutely nothing extra. He wasn't explaining anything um, and he got a lot of complaints, as you can imagine, um, and um, he didn't do much more teaching after that. So uh, it, that was a really hard experience for him, but also for us. Um, but to be honest, he should have been far better prepared for what he was about to do. Um, so that is my example of a bad presentation. But if you've got any thoughts on what makes a bad presentation, please put them into your Q&A box now and then Tamina can read those out and we can share um, as a group. Thank you, Sophia. So yeah, um, from turn-offs for me would be if someone's talking to me for a very long time, um, also the use of no images or videos, that can get really boring. And also another thing is if they're not engaging with the audience as well, we can easily lose interest. Uh, so we do have a few uh, suggestions. So someone said, Poor presentation and not practicing enough. Thank you. Uh, another person has said not being clear when they are speaking and poor grammar in the presentation, which is exactly true. Thank you for that. And then someone else has said when almost everything in your presentation is scripted and doesn't have any improvisation. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. Oh, wonderful. OK, those are really, really good points and you've definitely all hit the nail on the head and I'm going to be covering a, a lot of that today. Um, so you should have a very good idea of what makes a good presentation. You, and you all do have a good idea because you've sat through presentations, but um, I'm going to give you like the standards basically that you should be aiming for with your presentations. So some of the things you mentioned. Um, eye contact. So thank you for whoever who said, you know, not making con a connection with your audience. Eye contact is so important. If you're looking down at, at a piece of paper like I used to do when I was a student um, and not engaging, they're not going to listen to you. Fidgeting. Some people get extremely nervous when they present. Um, and, you know, I, I think a bit of nerves is good, but actually if you are prone to fidgeting, Make sure you're doing something with your hands. Use your space like, um, you know, use your arms to like explain what you're talking about rather than just fidget. OK, a lack of enthusiasm. So if I was to start speaking like this in a really monotone and disinterested way, I'm sure I'll probably send you all to sleep. So please speak with enthusiasm. Even if it's something that you're not particularly enthusiastic about, you need to find that enthusiasm because it keeps your audience engaged. Rambling. I am one for rambling, I have to say. It's part of my personality and it's part of the way that I speak, but I try to keep that under control. Um, reading from notes. Please don't do it. If you have practiced, you will be able to not read from your notes because you know your content and it will help you control the rambling as well. No flow. Again, if you have practice with every practice and you should ideally do it with some sort of audience when you practice, they can give you feedback and you can make your presentation flow in a much better way. And a weak voice. This is going back to a lack of confidence or um, not understanding how loud you should speak when you're uh, addressing an audience. But um, again, with practice, you can get that feedback from other people, ideally. Um, and, and then you can improve on those aspects. So it all comes down to practice um, in, in, in essence. So how to present well, we'll move on. 
so I'm going to run you through each of these items, OK, which will give you a good idea of um, what you should be including in your presentation. So an introduction, a hook, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Interactivity, having a beginning, middle and an end, having a smooth and engaging delivery and a summary. Now, guys, before I move on, I just want to remind you that please post any questions that you have about the presentation or, or presenting um, in the Q&A box as we go along and we will stop at two junctures to take your questions. So please feel free to drop those in and we will address those. OK, so let's go through these. An introduction. You always need to introduce your topic. OK, so. I did introduce today's webinar and I told you what I was going to be talking about and now I'm elaborating on it. So as an example of um, not understanding what's going on, if you don't introduce your topic, I'm going to read this paragraph out and I want you to give me some suggestions as to what you think this is talking about. OK, so in the Q&A box again, if you want to read it yourselves, fine, I will read it out, but let me know what you think this paragraph is talking about. So one of the the profound effects, uh, profound economic implications is that it liberates the user from oil consumption, Valentine 1972. It is an inexpensive, fast, healthy and environmentally friendly mode of transport. OK, so. Tamina, I will hand over to you. Are there any suggestions as to what this paragraph is talking about? Thanks, Sophia. So we don't have any suggestions at the moment, but I think it's talking about some mode of transport. OK, guys, take a guess. Please feel free. That's the point. The point is, is that it's a bit confusing um, what the, it's talking about. So if you've got any suggestions, please post them in the Q&A box. Anyone want to be brave and post something? We'll give you a couple more seconds. To me, is there anybody? No, nope, we don't have any suggestions at this point. OK, OK, that's fine. So we'll move on. So the answer is the environmental uh, environmental impact of bicycle use. So you would have never have got that if um, I hadn't had had introduced that as the title and what I'm going to talk about. So this is why it's really important, even if you're doing a five minute presentation, to say what you're talking about and, and the elements of what you're talking about, OK? So moving on, the hook. So what do I mean by the hook? Um, this is something that you should put quite early on in your presentation and it has to be relevant to what you're talking about. So it could be a quote, it could be a statement, it could be a statistic, it could even be a joke, OK? It could it, or, or a story. Something that's going to pique people's interest and keep them engaged in your presentation. So as an example, at the start of this presentation, I gave you the statistic of one in four people are nervous about public speaking. So that's something to get you engaged. And I, I decided not to just give you that statistic, but I opened it up and I wanted to see what your thoughts were, if you thought it was true or false. So that's adding an element of interactivity as well and keeping you engaged. So think about including a hook in your presentations. Interactivity, so um, there's a number of ways you can make things interactive. You can pose a question as I've done um, in, in this presentation earlier on. You can take a poll um, if you are presenting to a class or to an assembly. Again, you could hand, have hands up. So if I was presenting this in an assembly, I would probably say, OK, hands up. Who's nervous about public speaking? And then I could introduce that statistic, for example. You can have YouTube clips. You can have um, pictures or graphics, obviously, if you're using PowerPoint like we are today. And obviously I've used quite a few graphics and pictures in this presentation. Do not just make it all text um, and have short activities to make a point. So that um, previous activity about, you know, introducing your topic um, is, is something to, again, keep you involved in the presentation. Have a beginning, middle and an end. This is really important. So again, the importance of having an introduction, you would explain and elaborate and you would have a summary and that's like how you would write an essay. Again, you would always have an introduction and you wouldn't just launch in. Um, you would elaborate and then you would have a summary. OK, or you can tell a story. OK, so you, I, I told a little bit of a story earlier. I added in, 
you know, when I was younger, I was really, really nervous about presenting in school, which is absolutely 100% true. It's the last thing I wanted to do. Or, and I gave you examples of, you know, um, my experiences. So add a bit of yourself into it, be authentic. And, you know, you can take people on a journey or you can do a bit of both. So um, if anyone's seen a TED talk, I don't know if you have, but they use their storytelling quite a lot in TED talks. If you haven't um, seen a TED talk, I would strongly recommend it because they are very good examples of how to present and you can get some good tips from um, watching presenters and seeing how they use their body language and their arms and how what the narrative is when they present. Um, so TED Talks, they, they are on a variety of different subjects. So anything from nutrition to how to present to body language, psychology, criminology, loads and loads of different things. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. And we do have an example of a TED Talk in the next slide. So I'll move on to that. So a smooth and engaging delivery. Practice, 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 practice. And you guys said it at the start. A couple of you mentioned practice. So, yes. It's so important uh, and this is the, the real key to giving a good presentation. Do not underestimate the value of practice. Even if you don't have anyone to present to, present in the mirror. That's fine. Present to the wall, but present. OK. Um, introduce yourself. Always introduce yourself. It makes a connection with your audience. Make eye contact. So obviously this is not the forum for eye contact, but if you were presenting to your class, for example, um, you can use this little trick, which is what I use, is uh, to make a W in the crowd with your eyes. And that means you're not focusing on one group of individuals. You're not looking down and you're connecting with the whole room. OK, so that's a little tip for you. Next tip, smile. OK, actually, if you're smiling, you sound a lot better. So and it's encouraging to your audience that you're feeling confident and you're feeling um, good about being there. So smile. I am actually smiling now whilst I present because actually, as I say, you sound better. And if you're ever on the phone to somebody important, smile because it makes a difference to your voice. OK, top tip there. Be passionate, be passionate about what you're talking about. Now, I'm not going to underestimate that sometimes it's hard to be passionate about things um, when it's something that you may not be interested in particularly, but you have to present on it. So. Say if you were given a presentation in school about covalent bonds in a science class, you may not be particularly passionate about covalent bonds. However, what you do need to do is find your passion so you know that your science grade may be reliant on this presentation and it's important for you to give a good presentation. So your motivation to be passionate should come from there. OK, and if you are feeling underconfident, remember that the more practice you give, the better. And sometimes those gremlins, you know, they do sneak in and you kind of start thinking, oh, my God, I'm not doing a good job of this presentation. If that happens during a presentation, go back to the content, go back to what you're supposed to be doing. Focus on your content and focus on giving the best delivery that you can. OK. Stick to time. Sticking to time is really important. Um, and, you know, if you ever give it a presentation, say in an interview, you might be given a five minute slot. And the interviewer will cut you off if you go over five minutes. So getting into the practice of sticking to time is really, really important. And again, if you practice, you know that your content is either too long or too short and you can adjust it. Do not leave it to the last minute. If you are presenting in a group, everybody should talk. OK, and I'm sure you've heard from your teachers at, at some occasion that Everybody in the group needs to talk, otherwise you might be marked down. So it is important, even if you are very shy to practice, you can get better, you will get better, but you need to practice. Body language. So body language is really important and this ties into my last point, which is fake it till you make it basically. So even if you're not feeling confident, you should actually fake the confidence a little bit actually. So one good way, of doing that is standing really tall, uh, projecting your voice, using your space around you. Don't cower because what we tend to do when we're nervous is that we start folding our arms across our body. We end up getting bad posture. We don't want to look at people. We're trying to make ourselves as small as possible. Well, actually, you should be making yourself as big as possible. OK, and that actually helps incite that confidence in you. There is a YouTube, um, sorry, a, a TED talk clip 
in this, which Tamina is going to post in the Q&A. You can open it up in the background. It's 20 minutes, so we're not going to go into that now because we, it's a short webinar. But please have a look at this YouTube um, link afterwards um, because it actually gives a lot of tips about body language. And Amy Cuddy, uh, again, tells her story um, in terms of her own confidence and body language. But in this um, talk, she does talk about actually if you're feeling nervous and anxious, stand like Superman, basically. So kind of arms in your hips, really good posture and breathe deeply. So if anyone has ever suffered with anxiety, the first thing I'll say is start taking really deep breaths. OK, and that that stance and those taking the deep breaths makes your body calm down. OK, so if you're feeling nervous, do that. And even before a presentation, if you're prone to being nervous, what I recommend, go to a private space, even if it's a loose, stand there in a really good posture, arms on your hips, as I say, like Superman pose, and just breathe deeply for a minute, okay, just to get your nerves under control before you present. And it, it does have a reaction on your body, okay? So that's a top tip for confidence. Next slide. So, summary of your presentation. Essentially, this, these are the most important points that you want the audience to come away with. It just needs to be two or three points bringing out what it is that you've tried to get across in this presentation. That's all that is. OK, so we're going to go back to your questions in a moment. But before we do, I'm going to just talk through this slide briefly. So just a few extra top tips. So preparation, planning and practice are key. They are as important as the actual presentation. If you don't do these, um, you're not going to present as well as you could. So please do that. Make sure that you engage your audience. So as I say, using those interactive elements. So whether it's a YouTube clip or good graphics or asking questions or having hands up, engage with your audience in that way. But also remember the eye contact. Remember to smile. Kiss. Keep it short and simple. That's what that acronym stands for. You may have heard of it in the past. Again, what you have in your slides doesn't need to be, um, you know, too much. Talk to your slides rather than talking through your slides. OK, find your why. So this is back to, uh, back to being passionate. And why is it important for you to present well? So for me, it's important to present well because I want to make sure that the information that you have today is right and it's and it's drummed into your heads. Um, so for me, it's important to present well and make sure I'm transferring that information to you. And that kind of lowers my anxiety levels when I present is that actually the important thing is not how what I'm how I look is actually the information that I'm transferring to you. OK, and be you be yourself. OK, you may see an excellent presenter and think, wow, I'd like to be exactly like them. And where you can pick up some tips from other people like body language, for example, all the way that they do things, you can only be yourself at the end of the day. So if you are humorous, use humor, be authentic, use humor in your presentations. If you are really empathetic, you can use that. So I'm quite an empathetic individual. Um, I understand that people do struggle with presentations because I've been there myself um, and I'm trying to give you the top tips on, on building your confidence. So I do really empathize with those of you who do get nervous on presentations, um, but it is something that you can get over with practice. OK. So I'm going to stop there for any questions. If there's anything that wasn't clear or you want me to explain a little bit more, I can. I'm happy to do that. Um, or if there's any other general questions that you have, we can take a couple of minutes. We'll take two or three questions at this point um, and then we'll move on to the PowerPoint part of the presentation, as in how to present well on PowerPoint. Um, so I'll just hand over to Tamina if you have any questions at this point. And to Sophia, so we've got two questions right now. So we've got someone who said, how would you recover from making a mistake like tripping over your words? How would you recover from tripping over your words? You know what? It happens to the best of us. Um, we're human beings. We are um and uh, We, um, you know, we're not machines. That's the thing to bear in mind. You trip over your words. So what? Like it happens. It's not the end of the world. And no one's really going to pay that much attention to it. In all honesty, um, you just carry on again. It's going back to your content. You're there to deliver a presentation. OK, you stumbled over a few words. You carry on. It's not a big deal. 
do not blow these things up in your mind to be, oh my God, I've just stumbled over my words, blah, 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 blah. Because actually, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You just move on and you carry on with your presentation. That is it. OK, so again, I talked about those gremlins that that creep in sometimes when you're presenting. Like, Oh, my God, I've just made a mistake. Actually, carry on, because most of the time people don't really notice that much. So that's my top tip there. Thank you, Sophia. Um, and a last question is, what do you mean by find your why? So find your why is again about like, it's about saying what, what are you passionate about? OK, so as I said, I'm naturally introverted. I'm naturally not a good presenter. OK, but I'm here presenting and I present all the time at work and I've gotten better over the years because I have had the opportunity to practice. However, when I was really nervous initially and I was like, oh, my God, I've got to stand in front of a crowd of 300 kids. How's it all going to go? Are they going to be listening? Da, 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 da. Actually, I needed to ensure that they were listening. Right. So I needed to make sure that my presentation was on point, that I was checking their understanding. Um, so for my why is making sure that you guys understand what I'm saying. OK, so that's my why. That's my passion. And my passion is also helping young people. So. It's fundamental for me to fulfill my passion of helping young people by presenting well, by transferring that information well. So as I say, your why, why, why do you need to present? Actually, it's a skill you need to be good at in terms of employability. So that's your why, okay? Or your why could be actually, I wanna do a good job in front of my classmates and my teachers. So you know what? I'm gonna knock it out of the park and I'm gonna really practice and make sure I've got it down to a T as best as I can do and then you know you've done your best for yourself okay so that that might be your why so find your why why is it important to do this why is it important to do this and that comes from you okay i hope that's answered your questions um i think we'll move on at this point thank you tamina for taking those questions for me as i said we will have more opportunities for questions at the end and if there's anything i haven't covered please tell me i will happily happily answer your questions so moving on using powerpoint well so this slide right here gives me a bit of a headache um so um i hope you can all see it there we go i think it's just popped up um as i say this is a really bad powerpoint slide this is something that you should avoid um i would like in your q a box to tell me what's wrong with this tell me everything that's wrong with this because quite honestly i cannot bring myself to even read it because it's that messy and horrible and it's, it's definitely not how you should present on PowerPoint. So I'm going to hand over to Tamina. Um, please let me know what you think's wrong with it um, and any opinions on this slide. So Tamina, if I could maybe get your opinion on it a little bit and um, if we can take um, any suggestions from the Q&A box as to what's wrong with this slide, that would be great. Yeah, sure, Sophia. So um, for me, I see a lot of different colours. It doesn't look very professional um, with the yellow font as well. It makes it really hard to read. Um, again, the font size is very small, difficult to read. The background is very distracting as well. That should be a plain background. We'll just wait for the uh, suggestions to come in. Yeah, so we've got a couple. So someone has said too many words and hard to read. Uh, another person has said that it looks too busy. It's too wordy. The font is very small, too much text. It's it isn't clear to read yet. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you're absolutely on point again. Again, there's random spaces, funny colours. Like if anyone's got any sight issues, that would be a nightmare to read. This funny background that's that's in the way, which is horrible. Avoid those backgrounds, please. Keep it on a plain background if you can in terms of text. But this is definitely not how you should do PowerPoint. So I've done a cleaned up version of that slide. Um, I still think this is a bit wordy, like I think I could probably have cut it down a little bit more, but it's definitely less dense. It's something that, um, you know, I've bolded the key statistics there. Um, I've spaced it appropriately. There aren't any funny colours. There's no weird background. It's much easier to read through. Um, and again, it's more talking to it rather than just talking through it. OK, and that's what you should be aiming for as an example. So some top tips for PowerPoint. Um, I guess you guys already know this because you've just been back about them, but bad PowerPoints have lots of different fonts, 
different font sizes, too many colours, distracting backgrounds, bad spelling and grammar. I hate bad spelling and grammar because it just looks terrible. It's really hard to proofread your own work, guys. So if you can get somebody else to look over your work, particularly if it's a presentation to lots of people, make sure that um, you know all the corrections are done so it looks professional. Using slides as notes, so again, that kind of reading off the slide thing, not great. You should be talking to your presentation and overloaded slides, OK? So you can see in my presentation today, I've used images. The titles are all in the same font. Um, the text is all in the same font. I'm using consistent colours, so it all looks part of one presentation rather than random colours here and there, or random font sizes. So there's a lot of consistency and it looks far more professional, OK? Pictures on PowerPoint. So too many words can be overwhelming, as we saw from that pre that slide on personal statements, the initial one. Um, you can use graphics, but make sure that um, they are relevant graphics and uh, make sure that you keep your audience engaged, OK? And as you can see, the pictures are al aligned well in the presentation. They're not just randomly placed in top corners and that sort of thing. I've thought about the placement of the words and the images quite carefully. So some do's in terms of images. Make sure that um, you keep pictures simple. You don't want to overcrowd your page. Um, the text is more important than the imagery, I would say, and the message that you're trying to get across. So don't um, overcrowd your page with images. Choose complementary colours and be consistent if you can be. Use good quality images. So you can see here, these are both good quality images. They're not pixelated. So again, try to use images that are in the pixel range of um, 1000 or above because it will just look a lot better on the screen. So some don'ts. Uh, you can see in the top right hand corner image of Imran Khan there, the lawyer, um, I've compressed the um, image and it, it just looks tacky and unprofessional. Um, again, the image on the bottom left hand corner, the resolution is not high enough. It looks a bit pixelated. So again, avoid blurry, unclear images, avoid small images, avoid watermark images. Um, the images that I've used today are either um, images that we own as UEL or they are from royalty free websites. Um, and I have actually give royalties. If you've noticed throughout, I've actually given the royalties anyway. It's just, just like, a, by the way, this was photographed by whoever. So you can do that as well in your presentations. So good PowerPoint presentations, as I say, a good use of bullet points. It should not be a list. It should just be something you refer to ideally. Nice, clear fonts. Aim for symmetry throughout your presentation. So symmetry is beauty. As you can see, like the words are kind of symmetrical. They're kind of midway in the in the page. Um, the, the images align with the text. So bear those things in mind. Clear slides, no information overload and consistency in style. So final thoughts, we're approaching the end of our presentation. Um, I want to just reiterate that presentation skills are a skill, i.e. they can be learnt, OK? So those of you who are not naturally inclined to talking to big crowds, it's OK. You can learn it, I promise you, but you do need to practice and you do need to give yourself those oppor opportunities. So be courageous and give yourself the chance in school and any opportunities you have to present, please take them because that's, that's the way to get better. Even the most experienced presenters get nervous. I always say that a bit of nerves is a good thing because actually it shows you care about what you're doing. If you didn't care, you wouldn't be nervous. So, you know, yeah, you may be nervous, but take that with you. Um, give yourself a rationale for that because that is the rationale and just go for it, guys. Those of you who are confident and do like talking to big cr crowds, Please don't think you can wing it. <laughs> Just a word of warning. You still need to practice. Practice, practice, practice is the key thing I want to take you to take away from today. And everybody has their own style, OK? Do not try to emulate people word for word. You will present something in a different way to the way that you say your best friend presents it because you are different people and you have different qualities. And if you don't let your personality shine through a little bit, like, for example, your empathy or your confidence or your, uh, you know, your humour, you can appear a little bit wooden 
and you want to kind of avoid that. So be yourself, be authentic. So what you should now know is understand what makes a good and a bad presentation. I've given you lots of examples. Um, be comfortable with presenting, although this does take practice. So give yourselves a chance to get comfortable with presenting too. Know the rules of presenting well. So we talked about, you know, using your body language, making eye contact, PowerPoint, know how to produce a good PowerPoint and understand why you should practice. 